Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. We're going to be continuing our look at the High Elves in the current patch, and this time I'm up against Norska, so let's go ahead and have a look at the army compositions. Front line is going to consist of Spearmen. We've got two Phoenix Guard. Apologize about the flickering water, guys. Not a lot I can do about it, unfortunately. Lariel's going to be leading the way. Go ahead and look at her spell kit. She's got Shield of Safri. Uh, the two spells are Tempest and Earthblood, as well as Star of Avalorn. So, and uh, yeah, in the back we've got two archers with Sisters of, A Sisters of Avalorn in the center to give us a nice volume of fire. We've also got two Dragon Princes waiting in the wings. For the Norskin opponent, Wolfric the Wanderer leading some chariots. We've also got plenty of uh, Norskin ice wolves, lots and lots of axe and board infantry, which is a great pick. Uh, Balefiend Laura Fire, I'm not as big of a fan of here, but it is pretty decent. He's got Fireball and Burning Head, some more ice wolves, uh, Javelin Men. We've also got some Rotter Horsemen out on the side, in addition to some Skin Wolf. Armored skin wolves here, which you don't see too often. Uh, these guys are a little bit of a risk here. I'm not the biggest fan. I'll talk about why in a little bit. Beast of Tashnar as well. Regiment of Renowned Hounds supporting. So yeah, decided to uh, just kind of sit and wait, see if my opponent would advance on the hill position. I don't really want to take the engagement in the water here, especially against large targets. But uh, you can see the Famir not just waiting around. Definitely popping fireballs on Ilariel. I'm going to be trying to dodge those as much as I can. My opponent's also doing a good job kind of bringing up this flanking force here, preparing to come through the woods. Obviously, these dragon princes are hidden, as are all of these archers as well. But uh, you can see a quick charge from the chariot straight to the face of those spearmen. I'm a little bit late to react with my dragon princes, so I don't quite uh, get the counter charge there to drag them down. But we're going to get the front line moving forward. The sisters are opening up shots on those marauder champions. Their armor-piercing missiles will do pretty well against the AD armor there. Obviously, these high elf spearmen will be able to hold some time with their 50 melee defense. We're going to counter charge with the dragon princes straight into the water. And they will do quite a bit of shock damage there, even to that uh, elite unit. The melee defense of the champions definitely helps, but you can see they took a ton of damage right there. Very cost effective charge. Meanwhile, this flanking force did discover these dragon princes. I don't really mind them taking these shots. They have a missile block chance, high armor. They're also in the woods, this very dense. Kind of uh, Nagarothi woodland is very, very tough to get through. So, yeah, those huge evergreens are going to be blocking some of those shots. Likewise, they'll be blocking some of the shots of my arches as well as I try and shoot at uh, Wolfric and the, the uh, chariot here. But the dragon princes did get in. You can see they're kind of uh, surrounding these chariot models. We've also dived down with Lariel here to get a quick charge. She has a decent charge bonus of 62 up on the eagles, so we can definitely take advantage of that. Meanwhile, on the front line, uh, these Phoenix Guard are just kind of holding. I do like Phoenix Guard quite a bit against Norska. I just typically find that uh, Elite Halberds tend to do quite well in this matchup, um, from what I've found. You can see them helping to take down these chariots, and I think only maybe one model got away. Yeah, only one model got away there. Uh, these spearmen are holding out quite well, but you can see the Norskins uh, doing a little bit better in other engagements here. Obviously, Marauders with a couple chevrons will be able to cut through spearmen eventually, and this is going to be a nasty burning head here, just ripping through those Sisters of Avalorn, uh, doing a ton of damage there. Very good value from that Famir Veil Fiend, so a heads-up play by my opponent. The Burning Head, unfortunately, is going to come through and do a little bit of damage to his own Marauders. Won't do much to the uh, Dragon Princes, because, of course, Dragon Princes do have an in innate fire resistance, which is why I'm not the biggest fan of Lore of Fire against the High Elves. You tend to see Dragon Princes pretty frequently. Uh, Lariel's going to drop her Star of Avalorn to there, keep the Elite Cav nice and healthy. They are currently up against the Armored Skin Wolves. Armored Skin Wolves... While they do theoretically have good damage potential, they just don't do enough armor-piercing damage. They also have pretty low melee defense and armor. I mean, obviously the regeneration helps a bit with that, but I just find them to be a little bit underwhelming. I might have to play around with them a little bit more in this patch and see what we can do, but just in general, I don't find them to be super impactful. But uh, yeah, you can see these sisters, uh, those that remain, are opening up on the said Bale Fiend there. He does have some missile resistance, but we should be able to get some damage done in the meantime. I'm going to start pulling the archers back, as the front line is crumbling a little bit. Uh, the Phoenix Guard are holding out quite well. This unit of Phoenix Guard, um, beating down some Marauder Champions, has taken some damage from both Burning Head and the, uh, the boat, Ulfric's uh, Sea Fang. So it's been pretty decent, but oh, here it looks like another Burning Head's going to come down, and it does just barely clip the side of the unit. It doesn't quite catch them, but these Dragon Princes have just been ping-ponging around. You can see this unit up to 49 kills, got an XP Chevron there. This unit uh, taking some damage, but almost has an XP Chevron. 
Uh, Wolfric continuing to do his thing, trying to bog down these archers. He's done quite a bit of damage to them. Another burning head, or that, that's the same burning head, rather. Um, unfortunately, does roast out a lot of his own marauders there, which is pretty rough. Uh, burning head doesn't travel in exactly a straight line. It does tend to curve one way or the other slightly. So something to keep in mind there. There's a little bit of RNG involved in that time. Definitely did not go in my opponent's favor. Uh, that being said, things are still pretty even for the moment. Hilario comes in and gets a few really good attacks, though, on Wolfric. She's also being supported by these Phoenix Guard here. So all of a sudden, things are looking pretty good for the High Elves here. Dragon Prince is also just keeping these Marauder Horsemen at bay. Because of the, they've been operating in this uh, very heavy woodland, they haven't really generated that much value. Their Javelins just really haven't done too much damage. They have been able to generate some value, but just all these mobile units here have more or less been tied up by two Dragon Princes. We did send one Spearman to support eventually, but uh, yeah, you can see this other Dragon Prince again just ping-ponging around. Because these guys have such a high charge bonus, you want to be taking advantage of that as much as possible so yeah keep them on the move as much as you can and they will do work for you Wolfric there getting routed off must have taken some good damage from those Phoenix card again we're just keeping them nice and secure close to the archers as much as possible I don't want to get too far out you know chasing these units um, but Alariel on the other hand is nice and mobile she can definitely go chase so she's going to do so yeah fun stuff fun fun stuff the few archers that remain are going to be firing in here. Unfortunately, the it uh, looks like the sisters might have got eaten up by some hounds. Nope, those are archers. The sisters of Avalorn actually have decent combat stats. 36 attack and 38 defense. I mean, obviously, for a unit of that price, you don't want them in melee. But uh, still, you know, they can hold up against lower tier units like Ice Wolves. They definitely have superior combat stats there. So they'll be able to do all right for a minute. But, uh, yeah... Balefiend Lore of Fire here taking damage from the Phoenix Guard. It's getting pretty close. Balance power has come back slightly, though, as uh, some of these Dragon Princes are getting very, very low. Only 13 models here. This other unit, though, still 42 models, up to 2 XP chevrons, 110 kills, and climbing. Uh, they finished off those uh, Skin Wolves. They're now just clearing through as many of these Marauder Horse Masters as we can. Oh, Horse Masters. Interesting. I thought they were all Marauder Horsemen. Eh, you learn something new every day, huh? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You can see Wolfric did come back from routing there. But just the Phoenix Guard still being so healthy. Alariel obviously is still very healthy. Just a lot of targets for the Norskins to deal with in this late game. So it's going to be rough. They will uh, eventually end up losing it here. But still, very fun battle. Well played to my opponent there. Uh, there are a few critiques I would have for his build. But just in general, I think it was pretty solid. Wolfric on a Chariot is almost always a good option. Um, it's that 90 charge bonus. He can... Even against single entity models, like because it does armor piercing damage and has such a high charge bonus, you can actually do some funny things uh, with, with Hunter of Champions in the Chariot. Obviously, you don't really want to be using it against single models, but uh, yeah, did pretty decently here. Another very nice burning head from that spiteful little uh, <laughs> Fenrir Bale Fiend. Unfortunately, I don't think that one was overcast because it didn't do a whole lot of armor piercing damage, but uh, you can see the Phoenix Guard. Forming up for their final stand here. The Sisters and Archers re-secured up on the hill, those that remain. So, uh, yeah, high elf defensive position, able to hold out this time against the Norskin Assault, and it will be a victory. So, well played to my opponent. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that one. It was a fun battle to play, certainly. And, uh, yeah, again, Elite Halberds for pretty much any faction that can bring Elite Halberds. You know, your uh, your Black Guard, your Phoenix Guard, Chosen with Halberds, those sorts of things. Going to be very good in this matchup. Norskins don't have too many tools that can deal with them. Um, I mean, obviously, the armor-piercing throwing axe infantry, in theory, could, but you just don't see them very often because they have such limited range. Um, they'll get counterfired in this matchup, for example, by high elf archers quite easily. So it's it's a little bit tough there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go over some things in just a minute, but you can see both the units of Phoenix Guard racked up a ton of kills. Got One got an XP Chevron. Uh, let's see, both Dragon Princes getting XP Chevrons. This one up to three with 162 kills. This goes to show how powerful this unit is if you keep it on the charge, just constantly cycling around, you know, every few seconds, uh, pull out, charge into something else, and just keep ping-ponging around, and you'll be able to get a ton and ton of value. Uh, for my opponent's build, the champions, I definitely am a big fan of. Wolfric on the Chariot ended up being very good. The Fimir Balefiend Lore of Fire was pretty solid. Um, really got some good kills in against my backline. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of Lore of Fire here, just because you're not going to be able to use it against uh, Dragon Princes, which are definitely a threat in this matchup. In 
I think that uh, also instead of the armored skin wolves, it'd be much better off to go with uh, Famir with great weapons. There's a few reasons why. Uh, number one, these guys can saturate with the front line and make your shielded infantry uh, pay off better against armored units like uh, Phoenix Guard. Obviously, you don't want Famir weapon Famir with great weapons fighting Phoenix Guard for an extended period of time, but you can come in, like let's say charge charge in your Marauder Champions to fix them in place, then charge in your Famir Warriors um, to put that armor sundering, and then you can just pull back out through your own troops. Um, and that will help your Marauder Champions do a lot better. Obviously, Famir also, with the great weapons, have bonus versus large of 27, which is very significant. It does make them pretty good against Dragon Princes. They also have magic damage, um, which does help circumvent the physical resistance that Dragon Princes carry. If we go ahead and have a look. Dragon Princes have 20% physical resistance, 70% fire resistance, so... Uh, that, that magic damage does help cut through the physical resistance, so you will be get, getting pretty good value there. Um, obviously, Wolfric. Typically, I actually like to take him on the horse here, just to save on a little bit of cost, but the chariot is also quite effective. Um, if we were to do this, I usually cut Foe Seeker, um, just to save on cost, but these other three I will hang on to. And in terms of magic, like I said, I like the lore of Shadows. Personally, I would probably go with the uh, Balefiend lore of... Uh, so, or sorry, I like fire, but I would rather go with shadows here personally um, for the Bale Fiend. He's got just a few key spells, I think, here. Enfeebling Foe against the High Elves um, because they tend to have very good attack and defense. This can be an exceptionally useful spell. Likewise, the Penumbral Pendulum gives you another wind spell to layer on top of uh, the Sea Fang here, similar to the Burning Head, but it's a little bit more, well, it's a little bit faster and more predictable than Burning Head, so it's a little bit, I mean, I don't think it does quite as much damage, um, but it, the animation is a little bit faster, so it's harder to dodge, and it goes always in exactly a straight line. There's no deviation, so it's a little bit more predictable and easier to use in that way. Withering can also be quite nice here. It's pretty cheap on Winds of Magic, 114 gold though, um, but Minus 30 leader, or sorry, minus 30 armor, minus 8 leadership. Again, that additional armor sundering to help your shielded infantry perform better can be good. Of course, uh, leadership is also an issue sometimes against the high elves, so I might consider that one. Uh, usually, I'll cut that one though. Occam's Mind Razor is another one that could potentially be very good to pair um, with a good armor piercing unit that doesn't have magic damage. Um, but there aren't really, honestly, too many of those that I would bring here. Again, the Famir already have that, so. Pit of Shades can also be pretty decent, but it is a little bit expensive for how little damage it actually does at the end of the day, um, unless you overcast it, which then it gets even more expensive, but uh, yeah. So typically I'll just run Penumbral Pen Pendulum Enfeebling Foe and Melkos as well sometimes to uh, slow down Dragon Princes and do some damage to them. So yeah, I think this uh, this is a pretty good leadership core right here. I do like Wolfric and the, the Shadow Bale Fiend quite a bit. And then, obviously, the champions. We've got our, uh, our sword and shield marauders as well. We've got some uh, familiar great weapons to back them up. I also do like the mist stalkers quite a bit. They have stalk, they cause fear and terror, and they have excellent combat stats, being a regiment of renown. From here, we can do a few uh, fun different things as well. Some marauder horsemen definitely wouldn't hurt, just to kind of pad out numbers a little bit here. Um, I might also honestly grab a manticore, just to kind of run disruption in the back line. And then follow that up with some hounds, potentially. We're a little bit over cost here, so I would have to come in, fine-tune some things. Maybe cut evasion. Um, as, as tough as that is, that extra melee defense is definitely nice. But uh, I might cut that just for cost's sake. Something like this I think could be pretty solid. The Feral Manticore is a bit risky against the Hyles because they do have really good counter-air options. But at the same time, if they don't bring something that can deal with it, it will uh, just terrorize your opponent's backline. Um, you know, there's definitely a uh, case to be made, though, that you should just go for a wider, you know, more numbers against the High Elves, but that's a discussion for another day. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.